In this video, we're going to look at the basics of AJAX requests using jQuery. So what we're going to be doing here is we have a small form uh, that allows you to choose a username. So imagine this is some kind of sign up form for your website. A user can enter their username just here and then they can hit submit. That's going to go through to a fake page. This isn't built. Uh, obviously, you can see it's not found. But imagine that would be your sign up form. Now, in terms of the AJAX part of this, we're going to be creating uh, the ability to check if a username is available. We're not actually going to be doing this on the back end with PHP, just in case you're not a PHP developer. But what we are going to be doing is covering how we correctly AJAX to a specific file to then return a JSON string which contains whether the username is available or not. Now, that does sound a little bit complicated, and if that does throw you off, don't worry. It's a lot easier than it sounds. And you can then go ahead and on the back end, uh, do what you need to do to output this. So if we click check username is available here, uh, you can see that we get this, sorry, that username is not available. We get a little notice under here, and we're doing obviously all of this with, with no refresh because we're using Ajax. And if we were to go into the back end, this is uh, essentially what's happening at the moment. It's just encoding this array in PHP. So essentially what we're going to end up with is something like the following, but with JSON. So it will look like the following, available true or available false. Um, obviously, these will be double quotes. That's what we're going to we're going to output. So whatever backend language you're working on, as long as you can encode a an array or something to create a JSON string output, then this is fine. So if we change this to true, let's say we make a connection to our database here, check that username, and we check that again, you can see now it says that username is available. So we'll be building this with jQuery. We're going to get stuck in and write the markup that we need for this form and just explain how we're naming everything. And then we'll go on and then we'll actually create our JavaScript to be able to uh, send a request to the server and give us a message back. So the only files that we're actually starting with here is index.html, which just has an HTML5 uh, doc layout here, um, just a title, nothing special at all. And then we have uh, a folder called check, and then inside this we have username.php, and that's what we just saw a moment ago. So go ahead and create the functionality to output this. Otherwise, if you are working with PHP and you just want to test this in terms of the front end, just do exactly this, and that will just give you um, your little um, JSON string. So we can actually preview this from here by saying check username.php and what we're going to be doing is passing a username like the following so I could say username Alex and that's going to give me this JSON string here uh, I have a front-end formatter but essentially that's what you're going to see. So that's what we're going to be doing to easily pick this up within jQuery um, because JSON naturally works with JavaScript really well. So inside of the body then, we're going to create a form. Uh, this is going to go through to a fake page, signup.php. And the method here is just going to be post. Um, we're not actually going to be submitting this form because we don't need to. Um, in fact, let me just turn autocomplete off as well so we don't see previous usernames. And let's create a label now. Um, and we're going to say this is for username. Choose a username. So this is going to be our, our label. And then here we're going to have an input type with text. Um, we give this a name, username, that's just what's going to be submitted through to the server. Again, we're not going to be using this. And we'll give this an ID so the label matches up. Now we're also going to give this a class of username hyphen target. And we're going to uh, prefix everything that we want to do with this username checking with username hyphen. And this is the target uh, where we can extract the value to send through within the Ajax request to be able to check on the server. So down here I'm going to create an anchor and this is just going to have a hash as the href and the class for this is going to be username hyphen check. So this is the button that the user is going to click to check if that particular username is available. To check username we'll just say. Now down here we're going to have a div with the class of username feedback. Uh, sorry, feedback. And this is where we're going to inject the text to say that username is available or that username isn't available. Or if we have some kind of server error or something goes wrong, we can say, sorry, we can't check at this time. The user should be able to still submit the form and then it check, uh, do another check on the back end. Um, this is just a sort of nicety in the front end. So then we're going to have an input type of submit here. 
and for the value we can just say sign up or something so checking out our form here uh, we get our label as mentioned I can click on that to type a username in I can hit uh, check username and I can also sign up as well now, I've also opened my developer console here if you if you don't know how to open this you can just right click anywhere on the page and hit inspect element or you can get it from your settings bar up here um, but this is going to allow us to check out the network tab so when we do make a, an Ajax request we can filter down uh, for XHR here and this will give us everything that's uh, sent uh, in terms of requests so this is really useful to check out particularly when you're debugging things or you just want to understand how this works so now we've pretty much done here but we want to include jQuery um, I wouldn't recommend including jQuery for this kind of functionality normally unless you're using it elsewhere on the page but if you are trying to learn jQuery or you really just need a quick simple solution to be able to do this it may be your best option but do be aware that including jQuery obviously does have an impact on uh, load time on your page if it's not entirely necessary now I'm using Google hosted libraries to grab my version of jQuery uh, just because it's served a little bit quicker from uh, Google CDN and also it means that it's highly likely that this is cached for other users if other sites have used this link as well. So we're going to paste that in there and because we're on local I'm going to get rid of this which is basically an HTTP slash HTTPS um, uh, protocol and I'm just going to use HTTP here and then down here I'm going to create another script opening and closing tag and I'm going to point to a JavaScript file that we're going to write all of our code in. Now, I haven't created that yet so I'm going to create a new folder within this main directory called JS and then within that I'm going to create a file called main.js so we'll, we'll write all of our code in here just to keep it separate from this page. So let's link that in main.js so to test this if you are new to JavaScript we can just do a console log hello and on our page here we should see that console logged out here this is the console if you can't see this uh, you can hit this button here to open and close it or you can use this tab here uh, but I want my element inspector or network open and the console so I've used this so we know that our JavaScript file is linked in so what we can now do is start to think about how this is going to work so when we click username check which is that check username link next to the input we want to take this value here from this input type of text that has a class username target so we know what we can pick that up with JavaScript and then we want to place a message inside of user feedback so it's clicking on this grabbing this value sending it through to the server and feeding back to the user here fairly straightforward so for the JavaScript then we first want a uh, an event handler for our username check link so in jQuery we select things like this and we say username check like that and we use the on method to choose a event in this case it's click and then we have a callback which is essentially an anonymous function so that's this part here so inside here now we can actually do another console log you clicked and this will be console log when we click this check username you can see that this little circle here with the count shows how many times this message has been output so what we can now do is start to store some of the things that we need and that is the target so the actual value that we want to bring out of that username here and we also want to store the, store the feedback selector so we can add text to that so let's create a variable here called target and to that we'll assign username target so now what we're going to do is chain on the feedback selector so username feedback you don't have to do this you can remove this comma here and replace with a semicolon and you can use another var that is preferred um, sometimes but I'm just going to chain this on like so now down here what we can do is we can um, start our Ajax request so we'll look at the basics of our Ajax request and how we set everything up and then we'll start to create some functions that will help us along the way so things like um, changing the feedback text so we don't have to keep using feedback.text the text method which we'll see later so to do an Ajax request we use the jQuery dollar and we say dot Ajax so it's the Ajax method that we're using and inside of here we pass an object and this contains things like the URL that we want to send the request to so in this case it's check forward slash username.php 
then down here we need to specify the type. So the type in this case is going to be get. Obviously we can have get uh, post and other HTTP types, but in this case we just want to get. So essentially the URL that we're going to be sending this to will look like the following. Check username.php username equals Alex. So that's how our URL is going to look for our, our Ajax request. Um, so we now need to send some data through to this page because what's the use of hitting this page if we don't have a username to send through to it and look up in our database. So we use this data and another object here. We give the property name, so username I'm just going to call this, and then I'm going to choose the value from this target. So remember that's our input and jQuery gives us a method called val so we can do target.val and this will basically be Alex or Billy or whatever I type into there. So we need to, well we don't need to, but we can define which data type we're expecting back from this username.php file and I'm going to explicitly define this just so it's a little bit clearer and we already know we're expecting JSON back. Now we have uh, two callbacks here, one is success, so we add another closure here and then down here we have an error, so we had an, have another closure. And basically what this means is that when we hit this file, if there's an error for any reason, say this generates a um, an error, maybe a 404 or a, or a 502 or something, uh, this will hit this error here. There's plenty of options we can use, but in this case we're just going to say, sorry, can't check at this moment. So um, down here, let's just test this out. So console.log error. And up here, let's do a console log. But this time, I'm not going to log success. I'm going to, from this argument here, this will be the data that's contained with, within here. So it will output, obviously, our JSON. So in here, I can say data. So let's take a look and see what happens here. And we'll take a look within Chrome and see how this works in the network tab. So I'm going to type in Alex here, and I'm going to hit check username. Um, you can see we've already got console logged back an object, which is what we expected. Uh, we know that we have JSON coming through, and this looks like it's been parsed. Now, when you parse JSON, you basically take it and you'll turn it into a JavaScript object. So in this case, we have an object in JavaScript with a property called available and a value true. This can obviously be true or false. And if you're under your network tab, uh, you'll see that you get the uh, get request to username.php passing username equals Alex in the query string, which we expected because we're doing a get request. And when we click on this, we can see that we have the response here as well. Uh, you can check the headers out and things like that. But spent, uh, essentially, the response is the raw response. So this is the string that's generated by PHP. And the preview here is actually the object itself. So you can see that that uh, has been parsed there. So now that we know that we have this, we can start to do a little bit more inside of this success callback. And the first thing we really want to do is check if this available property is there, because if it's not there, then we can't check if it's true or false. So um, this isn't strictly necessary, but I'm going to do a little if statement in here. And I'm going to say if data.available doesn't equal undefined, that basically means is it defined? So this is defined. Now, otherwise we want to error. And here we also want to do a similar error. And this is just going to be a could not check at this time error. So up here, I am just going to define a couple of functions. There are better ways to structure your application. But since this is just a tutorial, we're going to create some, some functions just loosely up here. So the first thing I want to do is define a function to change the feedback text. So change feedback text. So what that will do is it will use feedback, the selector that we have up here. We'll use the text method to change the text in here. Now, where do we get that text from? Well, it will be from an argument within this function. So that could just be text. And we could just put that in there. So now what's going to happen is if we use this, we can pass in a string here. And that will change the text within our little box down here that we can't yet see. So that's not the point. What we want to do is if there's an error here or here, we want to change the feedback text. But because we're doing the same thing here, we want to create another function for this just so we can reuse it. So I'm going to create a function saying could not check. And inside of here, we want to change the feedback text. So we can use that change feedback text function that we've created here. And in here, I'm going to say could not check 
at this time. That's not going to stop the user sending a request via submitting the form um, because the check on that side of things should work. But if, for example, like I said, there's some kind of error along the way, uh, this will alert the user. So in here, um, or sorry, in here, this means that the um, uh, data.available is not defined. So we're going to say could not check. And down here, we're going to say could not check as well. So just so we don't duplicate this line. So let's check this out. At the moment, nothing's happening because we uh, aren't seeing any errors. But let's, for example, say inside of username.php, this wasn't available. So we're just using an empty array here in PHP and, and JSON uh, encoding that. When I hit check username, it says could not check at this time because that property isn't available. Likewise, if I was to just type a load of rubbish here, that would generate an error in PHP. And therefore, when we hit check username, we get the same error. So we've covered both of them bases. Now let's focus on what happens when this is available. So if this property here is available, we know that we have a true or a false value. True meaning that the username exists, or, or uh, sorry, is uh, doesn't exist and can be used, and false meaning that we can't use that username. So all we do is another if statement, fairly straightforward. We say if data dot available, available equals true, and we're using the triple equals here for type checking as well. Then we want to change the feedback text to say that username is available. And we already have a function for that up here, so we don't have to repeat this line of code. So change feedback text to say that username is available. Now otherwise, so we do an else here, we want to do pretty much what we did here, but this time we want to say, sorry, that username is not available. So now let's click or let's type something and click check username. That username is available. Obviously, we're not doing any dynamic checking. We've just hard coded this value, but you can do this on the back end. And then when we type in Alex there, we get the error because I've just changed that to false. Now, remember that if you are um, using the backend file to check the database, you're going to need that username that's sent through uh, this username equals Alex here. And obviously, remember, if I change that, that value just updates. The second request contains username is Billy. So just a quick one in PHP, how can we get this? Well, we can actually um, use the get super global. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to say here username and I'm going to output exactly what the user uh, typed in. So all we do here is we say get username. Uh, probably not a good idea to actually do this because you're going to need to escape things. Obviously, when you're putting it into your database, make sure that you are escaping everything you can just to prevent SQL injection. And now if we just take a look at the request, hit check username. Um, we click on this, we can hit response, and you can see here that that has been passed through. So if you do actually need to make, well, you are going to need to make this dynamic, so you can use get username. If you're sending it through as a post request, you'd use dollar underscore post, and that would mean you changing this type here to post. I mean, there's no reason to use post, uh, get is absolutely fine. So that is how we use very, very simple jQuery to go ahead and Ajax to a file bring us back some JSON data, depending on which backend language you're, that you're using. And then we check through it and we accordingly uh, give a little message to the user there.